Let's discuss different phases of V model and how validation phases are linked with verification phases. First phase, requirement analysis. In this phase, you gather all user requirements. This is like understanding what the users want in detail. Imagine we are developing an appointment scheduling app for a big hospital chain. In this phase, we decide on different features like users need to select doctors, choose dates and confirm appointments, etc. These requirements are drafted in Software Requirement Specification, also known as SRS. Till now, this phase is similar to waterfall model. But in V model, there is something extra in this phase, that is testing. So testing also gets involved in this phase. They go through the requirement specifications in parallel and create acceptance criteria that they will execute in acceptance testing. That is the last phase. But in this phase, they will start preparing for it based on the requirement specifications. As the testing team gets involved at an early stage and starts preparing the acceptance tests, they also spot on any issues in the requirements, which will save a lot of time. It's a kind of improvement over waterfall model. The testing team will just prepare the acceptance tests here. They will not execute anything as the software is not ready yet. They will run the tests in the last phase, which is acceptance testing. The second phase is system design. In this phase, we design the overall system architecture. We decide how the app will be structured, what databases we will need, what kind of servers will be required, how it will be scaled, and how it will be resilient, etc. etc. In parallel to this phase, the testing team starts preparing the test plans for the system testing. It will include the plans for performance testing and security. The testing team will just create the test plans here and will execute them in the system integration testing phase, which will be occurred later on. This will save the time and also help spot on issues early, such as whether factors like performance and security have been considered in the system design or not. It provides a verification layer in the system design phase. The next phase is high level design. This involves breaking down the system into smaller modules or microservices. For example, if we are building an app for a hospital chain, then we might have separate microservices for user management, appointment scheduling, test booking and report reviewing. The testing team will create test plans for integration testing in this phase. These test plans will be executed in the integration testing phase. The next phase is low level design. Here you get into the class level details of each component. For instance, in the appointment scheduling module, we specify how users will select doctors, choose dates, confirm appointments, what kind of REST APIs it will expose, what kind of classes it will have on server side, etc. etc. The testing team will create unit test cases for each microservice or module in this phase. These unit test cases will be executed in the unit testing phase, but the testing team will prepare them in this phase only. The next phase is coding phase. In this phase, the development team starts coding based on design documents and develops all the features of the app. Now, once the coding is done, the next phase is the starting of the validation phases, that is unit testing phase. In this phase, the testing team will run unit test cases for each module of the software. The unit test cases were created earlier in parallel with the low level design, but now these unit test cases will be executed. After this, the next validation phase is integration testing. In this phase, we test if the different modules work together. For example, in our appointment booking app, we will check if a user can log in and schedule an appointment seamlessly. 
these test plans were already created in the high level design phase and they are just executed in this phase after this comes the system testing phase in this phase we will test the entire system as a whole to make sure everything works together this includes testing the entire app for functionality performance and security the last phase of vmodel is user acceptance testing in this phase we deploy the product on the uat environment where real users can test the product to ensure that it meets their needs and expectations or not so these were the different phases of vmodel now how is vmodel different from waterfall the v model is very similar to waterfall as it follows a sequential path however in v model each development phase has a corresponding testing phase which helps in identifying issues early now let's discuss some of the advantages of v model v model helps in early detection of issues since testing happens in parallel with development Bugs and issues can be identified and fixed early, saving time and cost. In V model, each phase has clear deliverables, which makes the process structured and easy to manage. V model is well suited for small projects where requirements are clear and unlikely to change. Let's discuss some of the disadvantages of V model. The V model has a rigid structure and is not flexible. once a phase is complete it is hard to go back and make changes for large and complex projects where requirements might evolve the v model can be too rigid therefore it is not fit for large or complex projects if requirements are not well understood or keep on changing frequently then the v model might lead to project failure due to its inflexibility So there is a high risk and uncertainty associated with the V model. To summarize, the V model is a great SDLC model for projects where requirements are well understood from the beginning and you want to ensure that high quality is delivered through rigorous testing. That's all for now. In the upcoming part of the series, we will discuss other SDLC model. 